and that is uh, going to be the oration. And uh, before we start that, I would like to um, first invite Makram Kochika, one of his uh, favorite students, and uh, he was very, very fond of Makran. And uh, not only that, he supported his uh, institute. And I was a little envy of you because he made a donation of one crore to your hospital uh, for taking care of uh, the hospital. So how much was the, uh, the, 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 he went extra miles to support his students uh, who are doing well. Uh, and that was one. And uh, Makan Kochikar is going to speak about Adit Farke as a legend. And that especially for you to, um, to know for whom we are giving our oration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mahesh Bhai. In fact, one of the most difficult tasks ever Mahesh Bhai asked me to do in my lifetime, I thought when he asked me to speak on Dr. Farke, I'm sure there are many people in the audience who have been blessed by his support, his advice, and so many things he offered to many of you in the audience who can speak about him. There are so many here and you could consider me as just one of, the you, one of you who is representing to speak on Dr. Ajit Farke. Born in 1935, 2012, the last we saw him. Born in illustrious family. Here you would see young Dr. Ajit Farke. That's his mother, a great social worker, Mrs. Manutai Farke. Many people who are in the audience here, they would remember him as Dr. G. M. Farke, the father of Dr. Ajit Farke, equally renowned and a big name in surgery and urology of those times. And we are lucky and fortunate to have his sister, Mrs. Sachala Joshi here, and that's a wonderful picture from the family. The reason I put this picture over here is Dr. Farke believed that his life was made by two eminent people and he thought in his lifetime his gurus were his mother and father in a true sense and that's why the picture is. In every walk of life he wanted to emulate his father. He went to medical school, that's a KM Medical College, KM Hospitals, NGS Medical College and KM Hospital, he entered the medical school in 1954. He's a great sportsman also. He played table tennis. And in fact, apart from academics, he was given a rotary prize for all-round best student of the KEM in 1957. 1959, he qualified as MBBS. 1962, he did his MS in general surgery. And believe me, he had three outstanding gold medals in MS general surgery, which probably is a rare event in the history of St. G.S. Medical College. He subsequently wanted to pursue his career in neurology under the tutelage of his father. He advised him to work in KM Hospital as a lecturer and subsequently also spent time in Tata Memorial Hospital learning oncology. During this time, his father has it plans to send him overseas to train further in urology and that was young Dr. Ajit Farke. Unfortunately, the calamity took place and he lost his father suddenly because of an cardiac element. He had a big nursing home. His father wanted him to become a urologist and come back and, learn that, and run that nursing home. And it was a big dilemma in front of him and his family what to do. And I can understand why Dr. Ferke felt so high about his parents. Because his mother and the family stood behind him. And they said, okay, you go ahead, get your urology training and come back. And his mother, though a non-doctor, she managed to run this nursing home with the friends and all the guys around and there he, Dr. Farke went down to Canada in 1965 to 1968. This was Magill's University, Montreal, Canada where he went to. The famous Royal Victoria Hospital, Montreal, was two years he actually worked there and he proudly used to tell us how he was trained by Professor Dr. McKinnon. The concept of subspecialities you can imagine, I'm talking about 1965 to 68, the department had all the subspecialities in urology, including urine transplantation. His father was pioneer in Millions Prostatectomy, late Dr. G. M. Farke. And Dr. Ajit Farke had learned all that sort of Millions Prostatectomy and he was known for that. But when he went down to Canada, he learned TURP and came back in India, 
was one of the very few who had learned TORP technique. He also learned more aspects of renal transplantation. For benefit of some of the students here, I'm sure you would have heard this sort of concept of FADK and FADK work on infertility. And we were told about this when we were trainees. I tried to dig into literature and went into the archives and find out what exactly was this work about. And as you would have known Dr. Fadke, in those days we did not have much of sort of an internet, we didn't have much big libraries and access. His father used to write some diagrams and draw some diagrams of difficult operations, difficult concepts, and all that he had treasured with him when he went down to Canada. His father had worked on vasoepidermal obstruction caused by smallpox. And the kind of surgeries he was advocating those days, which he was famous for, was vasoepidermal anastomosis. And when Dr. Fadke went down to Canada with all his sort of sketches and diagrams and sat down and worked and shared this work with his colleagues there, they thought they have a gold mine there. And I think in India, his father ran a big program of vasectomy and reversal of vasectomy. And if you look at the literature here, he published a paper in Journal of Urology on experience in syndrome and astomosis of the vas deferens. And this is typical of Dr. Farke. He would give credit to his father first, the Dr. Farke GM, followed by Farke AG, and that was typical of Dr. Farke. What this paper looked look, look like that in 1967, I looked at it. And the, it was basically, also he did some work on male infertility and uremia also while he was there in Canada. And what you found in those days, that patients who are on dialysis, they have temporary shutdown in spermatogenesis. And there was a marked improvement occurs in sexual performance, semen analysis, and testicular biopsy after successful kidney transplantation. And you can imagine the work has been done somewhere in late 1970. During his training time, on his work on infertility, he was given a Best Essay Award by American Journal of Urology in 1967. And we as a trainee were told about it, and we feel so proud about it because after so many years, you know, that kind of honor, that time, kind of honor to get in those times was, I'm sure, was really challenging and really satisfying for him. India was very close to his heart, and he always wanted to come back to India and serve India. Colony Nursing Home, the nursing home which belonged to his family and him, from 1968 when he came back, he wanted to work there, and he continued to work till he prayed last. When he came back, he was also attached to Sion Hospital and LTMs in Mumbai in a teaching capacity for five years. The amount of time he spent in Conley Nursing Home, I think is a small place, so many people, so many dignitaries actually attended or sort of came down for a treatment. One of the famous authors in India, they wrote here, there was an angel called Ajit Farke residing in Conley Nursing Home. That was his dedication to his work. He joined Bombay Hospital about 1970 and further onwards. That's the typical picture of Bombay Hospital. And you can imagine in those days, when in India the urology was still growing, he had this concept of subspecialities. From 1980 onwards, he had people of his own team sent overseas, send them for subspecialities and bring them back to India. What a novel concept. We are fortunate to have here Dr. Thapte, he was sent for endo-urology training. We had Dr. Bhaktava Dasturah who was sent for the Eurodynamics and he always used to call the first dynamic lady of India, Eurodynamic lady. He himself was interested in infertility. He sent Harshit Punjani for pediatric urology training to London. Srinivas was his really sort of a heartthrob and he sent him for a training in sort of Euro-oncology and he was uh, trained overseas. Um, he had a blue-eyed boy of uh, Dr. Farke, Ume Shoza. He sent him for renal transplantation, urinephrology. I'm talking about 1980. And those days when the urology was in infancy, he wanted all those subspecialities to develop. Subsequently, he had DNB urology program, MCH urology program, and he got Bombay Hospital on international map with the quality of urology care in Mumbai. <laughs> One of the admiring thing of you know, that department, and I'm sure all those people working in Bombay Hospital would be really talking about this Wednesday activity. Dr. Kashyap is here, Dr. Rati is here, and so many people. This Wednesday activity every Tuesday at 2 o'clock was something like a Euro radiology meeting. By dot 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, we would have huge number of x-rays and CT scans, and you would have one resident presenting a case and another resident would be quizzed by all the consultants in the department and the activity still continues to grow. 
Dr. Fadke had this typical style. If somebody is coming to Mumbai, he would ask them to come to on Wednesday. He will bring them to the hospital, bring them to the clinic. The way in which he will introduce those people was also something, a very learning experience for all of us. And it was really wonderful activity. Where can you get a true good training where five different consultants would give different opinions on a particular x-ray? And I think that was the basis of how to speak, how to talk and how to sort of conclude any difficult situation and that was a really wonderful activity. He always believed that you have to sort of you know, build with block by block. He never hurried anything and that was typical of Dr. Ajit Fadke. Trained many people. He became chairman and head of the Department of Urology and he was there as a head of the department till 2009. We all call this is not as a person who taught so many people, but this was something like a Farke Gurukul. Apart from his teaching, he would tell you about the philosophy. Dr. Anand Kumar told about you know, how he sort of shaped his thinking process even by one interaction. He identified the best talent. Now today in USI, we have hundreds of fellowships where we can send people for a fellowship program. But in those days, to think about guys, identify the talent and send them overseas was really, really something a good virtue. He trained, sent so many people to UK, especially Bedford Hospital and subsequently London in his uh, own way by putting them in the right place. And not only that, when they came back, he charted career path for almost everyone. And this is so many people who trained over the period of time. And this was a picture taken at the time of World Congress of Endo-Urology. 14th floor of Bombay Hospital, if you want to go and see, you should see how the department is. It's worth looking at the library of Bombay Hospital as well as the Pathology Museum. And it's really sort of his vision where he actually wanted to develop this department. In this picture, you would see Mr. Barwale, who actually supported him in getting that 14th floor department for Bombay Hospital. He published widely, had about 40 guest lectures, and named oration of international repute on 15, a phenomenal organizer and an excellent host. If you want to organize anything, you should learn how we would organize a single meeting, including talking to them personally, inviting these people, and making the best of the program. He rem remained as a professor and head of the Department of Urology. He was honorary urologist to Rajivavan, that's the governor of Maharashtra, honorary urologist to President of India, and medical director where Dr. Hema does a huge amount of work of Aditya Lithotripsis Center. He was a part of USI, and in fact, USI cannot be separated from Dr. Ajit Farke because his father was the first president of Urological Society of India, and he took a great pride to become a 25th president of Urological Society of India. He served society in the capacity of honorary secretary as well as honorary treasurer. During his tenure, he wanted urology to grow further, so he divided urology into four zones. And I always called him Shankaracharya because Shankaracharya divided, you know, all those four zones in India, something like, you know, uh, urological society was in, divided into four zones. He was very proud of his own activity. One of those sort of meetings he was invited to inaugurate and he would always talk with a great pride how the USI shaped. Urology, Society of India in his recognition gave him a gold medal in 1993 and gold medal of the West Zone in 1997. He was very fond of AUA. So many Indians who have done so well in AUA he was really proud of. Names like Pramod Sogani, Dr. Vagre, Gopal Badlani, in fact, in this hospital, in this very place, I think Gopal Badlani was felicitated when he became secretary of the American Urological Association. And he would never ever miss a AUA and a Canadian meeting. I'm sure this was a great sort of moment in the Indian urology when he was given AUA presidential citation in 2011. First time conferred to a foreign doctor in 109 years in the history of AUA. And this was a great moment for all of us in India, as well as for him and his family. As I said to you, he was an excellent organizer, be an activity of Bombay Hospital, West Zone, USI conferences. In fact, he was patron and the chairman of the World indo Urological Congress in 2004, where Dr. Mahesh Desai organized in Mumbai. I still remember to appreciate people who had done very hard work was the biggest virtue of this extraordinary man. When this conference was conducted, at that dinner, Dr. Farke gave a memento to Dr. Desai and said, Mahesh is our diamond and you can see that in the office of, of, of MPUH. He guided many people. He treated many VIPs. 
that includes the list of vice presidents, president of India, ministers, industrialists, authors, doctors, film personalities, sportsmen, and spiritual leaders. But at the end of the day, he had a common man still central to his heart, and that was typically would be overflooded at Conley Nursing Home in Bombay Hospital. This is another sort of a, a great spiritual personality, um, Mr. Athawle in, in, in Maharashtra is as, as well known as. And this is M.F. Hussain, and who had uh, treated, and you see Dr. Farke and uh, uh, Mr. Zoshi here, um, and along with M.F. Hussain. A large amount of social work, and I think that virtue he got it from his father as well as his mother. He had close ties with RSS organization, and he wanted to do a lot of work for poor people. Here you see his association with RSS. There's a guy called as Mr. Devras. He was in charge of RSS. He went down to see him. In fact, you can see L.K. Advani here, you know, when he had actually uh, was treated in Bombay Hospital. This is Nana Palka Smriti Samiti's building. And what this building is signifying, this place is a place where people who come from all corners of the country to get a treatment done for a cancer in, 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 in Mumbai, you must have known there's a place called as Tata Memorial Hospital. People from all over the country flock to this place. In fact, it is said that the outpatients actually overflows and runs on the streets outside the Tata Memorial Hospital. People who come to that hospital do not have a place to stay, especially they are coming for radiotherapy, chemotherapy. With that kind of social activity, he helped this organization to raise the fund and have that kind of building. Here you can see this is uh, one of the child undergoing chemotherapy in that kind of place. And it was almost subsidized and almost free of charge. With all this sort of an, a work, recognition from the peers and organized in society, one of the highest honors, B.C. Roy Award, 1998, for developing subspeciality in India was given by President of India to him. Then won three award in 2006 at Bombay Hospital, and you would see the Chief Minister of Maharashtra giving him this one of the fantastic awards. Again, an award given by uh, Chamber of Commerce, and again, an award of Savarkar, which was given to him for his great social work, and another big award for a spiritual fellow. And Vaman Rapai felicitating him for his social work. He inspired many, made their careers, and is guiding force behind many institutions. And I would ponder here and spend few minutes on talking his association with Muljibhai Patel Urological Hospital and JPAC. These are the old days where you would see young Dr. Raja Purkar and Dr. Mahesh Desai, and you can see here Rohit Bhai. He was so proud of this place, and being a trainee in those days, between 89 and 90, he would talk so much, so much high about this place, and he said, these are the young guys in a small place developing a big specialty in urology. He was instrumental in getting Dr. S.D. Bapert here as director of postgraduate studies. When he visited General JPAC, when he was created, these were his words. A magnificent and by far numero uno teaching and service facility in our country, in urology and nephrology, best of luck for ever, bright, ever, ever a brighter future, Dr. Ajit Farke. And that is, that's what he meant. And I must say, and I said to Dr. Desai at one point, when we met at one of the dinner meetings, Dr. Farke said, after all that during his last period, one of the best urologists India has produced is Dr. Mahesh Desai. He's a complete urologist. He said he's a urologist par excellence, technocrat. He trains people and created a good atmosphere and a good training institution. That was a compliment from him. He was so proud of Dr. Farke, when he, Dr. Desai, when he became president of SIU, he hosted a wonderful party in Mumbai at Wellington Club. And that was the picture here. And that was, you see, and it was a surprise party. Dr. Desai did not know anybody, and he invited so many people across. And he had a special affection for Dr. Desai, as well as MPUH. We were also blessed, this our hospital, Siddhiwanai Ganpati Cancer Hospital Miras, by his support right from beginning. And this was on his uh, birthday celebration. You know, we had organized a big party in Mumbai. And I thought it was appropriate to felicitate him when we finished our 12 years, and it was a great success in our own hospital. And I wanted his old friend, Dr. Praful Desai, to come and felicitate him, um, because whatever support he gave, and this was him speaking at our hospital. As Dr. Desai mentioned, he actually donated worth of rupees one crore to our hospital. He actually sent one guy one morning and he said, Makaran, I'm sending one gentleman and he's just going to come and meet you. And he used to send many patients. 
And I thought he gave an envelope and went away. And evening when I opened the envelope, there was 75 lakhs plus X amount of money. And I said, what is it all for? And he said, no, this fellow came and said, I wanted to donate money. I said, you need it more for your hospital. And in his memory, we have set up a dialysis unit because that was a wish of the donor, plus we set up a bladder cancer unit. And that is Dr. Ajit Farke picture displayed in our department here, how we supported our hospital and that's a dialysis unit and a bladder cancer unit. Friends, an ideal is one thing and living up to is quite another. The man who was born in this area, Mahatma Gandhi said, and I can't see anyone other than Dr. Ajit Farke who was a living example of that. Thank you very much.